Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel Sugar Mama TV. If you haven't already subscribed, please make sure you do. Now this is actually a continuation of my series around minimalism, decluttering and kids. I really hope that last week's video gave you lots of easy to follow and apply tips, tricks, tools, strategies and attitudes when it comes to decluttering your home and creating more time, more space and more joy for yourself and your children in your home. Now for this video I'm continuing on with another seven more tips, tricks and ideas for you. So if you haven't subscribed, please make sure you do. Alright, number one, starting with clothes. There are so many amazing and super cute fashions and styles and trends when it comes to shopping for our kids these days. I remember when I was a kid it was really quite boring and dowdy. But it is so easy to get caught up in the moment and spend a whole pile of money on clothes that our kids do not really need and actually aren't even going to have much time to wear. Because remember, kids grow at lightning speeds and they definitely hit those growth spurts. So do not get too carried away when it comes to clothes shopping for your children. Have a long hard think about what do your children actually need? What are the clothes that they like to wear? What are the colours that suit them? Try and incorporate a capsule wardrobe or even a signature style for your children so you don't feel the need to keep up with what the current fashion trends are. And even simply by making sure that you fold up and put away your children's clothes in a neatly organised way where all the t-shirts are together, all the pants are together, jumpers are together and shorts are together, you will know what you are running low on. You will know that what you need to replace or um, what new bigger sizes you will need to buy. You will feel so much more organised in knowing exactly what your kids need and it will also stop you wasting money by buying duplicates. Tip number two is to focus on experiences rather than presents. When it comes to birthdays or Christmas times or any other you know, festivity where there's going to be gift giving, why don't you think about maybe cutting down the gifts or completely removing all gifts and focusing on experiences. In my home with my family, I buy Rocco an experience. So for Christmas, he got karate lessons. My parents bought Rocco swimming lessons. My goddaughter, I took to the movies. Um, a girlfriend of mine for Rocco's birthday is actually giving us a voucher to go to Vivid Night Zoo. When you invest in experiences rather than physical presents, you're actually creating memories and memories last forever. And also while this experience is going on, you're creating a very valuable and important bond between the two of you. Tip number three is to prepare in the lead up to gift time. Rocco's got a birthday coming up in a couple of weeks and I know that a lot of his other family and friends will be giving him gifts. So in preparation for this, we are going through the toy basket and we are going to have a good chat conversation as to what toys it is time to let go of and give away. Now this means when those toys do arrive, we can put them neatly away in their rightful place and home. And Rocco can be excited about wanting to play with the new toys. Tip number four is to teach children how to say no thank you. It is really important that we teach our children or make them become aware of that feeling of adequate sufficiency. When they feel like they have everything that they need and want and don't actually need anything else. They're happy with what they've got and they're grateful for what they've got. Kids need to realise they actually already have everything that they need and more. Tip number six is to use our local libraries. Instead of going out and buying a whole pile of new books, why don't you make it a bit of an experience or an adventure going to the library together and actually together picking out books that you want to read together. Not only will this be great for the environment and save you money, but it's great for kids to understand the concept of borrowing and taking care of those items and making sure that we return them back on time. There are a lot of important responsibilities and life lessons that come from this experience. Tip number six is to have a swap group amongst family and friends. For kids of different ages and groups, you can pass those toys on around the circle. We create a community of toys, share them so that we don't need to constantly go out and buy things and consume things and waste things and waste money. Share the toys. It is so enjoyable when I see some of my friends' kids wearing Rocco's old clothes. I love knowing they've helped my friends save money and also that those clothes have continued life left in them. And then the final tip, tip number seven for teaching children and incorporating millimeters in your home is to teach children gratitude. Let them know, tell them how lucky they are. Make them understand it's not about having more stuff and more toys and more things and more gadgets in their life. It's actually about connection. It's actually about security. It's actually about joy. It's actually about love. It's actually about warmth of relationships, feeling nurtured and secure and safe and having a home. These are actually things that kids need to acknowledge and show gratitude and appreciation for. And remember, what we appreciate, appreciates. 
And then finally, we need to remember to practice what we preach. There is no point us banging on about being tidy, respectful, you know, reducing our wastage and consumption and saving money if we're simply not doing it ourselves. Kids are incredibly intuitive. We need to remember that. And we need to not only lead by example, but make sure we stop and take the time to explain what we are doing and why and the benefits that come from this. So that our children then can incorporate this in their own habit system and in their own lifestyle and way of looking at life and dealing with problems. And then this way, the benefits that come from this amazing lifestyle can continuously flow on generation after generation. All right guys, that's it for this video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe because I've got one more video coming your way and I would actually love it if you could share with me what things you do in your own home with children, decluttering and minimalism to help keep things in check because I'm always open to ideas and suggestions myself. Ciao for now.